Hey everybody and welcome to my darkroom. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Argus C3 camera. As you can see I actually have three of them here. Um, they're all a little bit different but they all are still C3s and we're going to talk about that quickly. So first I'll move these two out of the way and we'll focus on this guy here. So this is a pre-World War II Argus C3. And the best I can figure on this, based off uh, just serial number and the features, this would have been made anywhere from 1940 to 1942. Um, on all these Arguses, you can actually see they have serial numbers stamped in many places on them. This one is a six digit number, and that really doesn't add up to anything that would have been in the Argus serial number dating kind of series if you look on their website. But it has everything else, uh, being it's got the rangefinder that's coupled by the gear. And you can even see that here the gear is actually larger than the bevel underneath it. So there's actually a beveled gear underneath there. And then this little mushroom cap is actually bigger than the gear, which you'll see on other cameras, um, they actually made that smaller in later years. Um, also, big thing is it does not have a hot shoe or like a hot shoe mount on the top. So some of the big giveaways of the age of this camera. Um, so this is the pre-World War II. Uh, 1940 to 1942 and this one is actually my great-grandmother's uh, when she passed away I kind of inherited it so really cool camera I've had it for a long time and I've always kind of been interested in it that's what started kind of this whole deep dig on Argus so then we'll come to this one um, these next two cameras I kind of picked up more recently for a project I'm working on which I'll talk about in a later video but for now Let's get to the second one. This is uh, another C3, obviously, but this is the post-war. So during the war, Argus stopped all their production on their camera line, all their lens manufacturing. They stopped everything and went purely to military support. And a lot of what they did was like optics. So you're talking about optics for, you know, guns, for gun sites, for ships. They did tons of crazy stuff when it came to optics for uh, airplanes and ships really really cool they got a lot of awards um, did a lot of really good work that probably had a lot to do with influencing the war um, but after the war they got back to it and they started making cameras and when they started back up production they stuck with the c3 but they had made a few changes to it uh, one of the big ones at least when you look at one of these cameras you'll see that the later models actually have the little argus badge here on the bottom which is absent on these older pre-war cameras. So that's like a really quick way to tell what you're dealing with. Um, also, they changed up the the uh, shutter speed, which you can see on this one, a little more basic, uh, a little more colorful too. And then on the top, you can see the addition of the hot shoe. Um, but otherwise, really kind of a unchanged camera. Uh, the back is the same, it opens the same way. In fact, you can even see serial number in the same place. But this one has a seven digit serial number and on the Argus website, you can actually look that up. So this camera here in particular would have been manufactured in 1956. So almost 14 years after the first one here. So that's pretty crazy for 14 years difference. These cameras almost look identical and they behave in the most, I mean, they behave pretty much identically. So man, that's crazy. It's a pretty big difference. So. Then later on in the C3's life, they actually re-released it and they called this the C3 standard. So this is the third camera that I picked up. Um, and once again, these look in a little worse shape. Uh, like I'll talk about in the next video, I actually bought these just to almost salvage for parts uh, to use for another project. So I kind of looked for ones that were almost in disrepair or not working. So that's how I came across some of these lesser, uh, lesser beautiful copies. So. Like I said, this is the Argus C3 standard. So this one was made later in the run of the Arguses. And you can see they updated a few things. Um, notably, they changed the shutter button here and made it a little more comfy looking, more of like an actual camera button rather than what it was on these older ones where it was almost more like a cable release shutter button if you've ever seen those. Um, with it, on this one in the standard, they also used a different style lens. Uh, little nicer but still the same thing these were a 50 millimeter 3.5 lens they stuck with that through the entirety of the Argus line um, some other differences are just really simple stuff like the winder knob is different and then if we flip over to the back you'll see it's a lot of the same except on these later later models instead of putting the serial number on that back edge here inside you could actually find it on the bottom of the camera and this was a 10 digit number on these older C3 standards. And basically there's like a little 
way to tell. Simple, <laughs> simple enough if you can look it up on the website. But in the case of this, the fourth digit actually denotes when it would have been made. So in this case, that fourth digit is a two. And based off a chart on the Argus website, you can see that that actually means that this camera would have been made in 1962. So if you look at it, here you have three Argus cameras. Um, all of which were made by Argus, all of which are the C3, have the same basic 50 millimeter 3.5 lens. They're all coupled rangefinders, and all look more or less the same if you put them side by side and just look at them quickly. Um, but in there you have a distance of a range in years anyway, from 1940 to 42, all the way up to 1962. So it's interesting to see that big of a range in a camera's production line, but still have that camera remain more or less the same minor you know from a few changes so i thought that was fun i had these cameras lying around like i said i was working on a project where i actually needed to tear one of these apart uh for scraps and obviously i wasn't about to tear apart uh my great grandma's camera because there's a lot of sentimental value to that but i figured you know what these are actually fairly easy and plentiful to get in fact, somewhere around 3 million of these were manufactured from the start to the end of their production, making it one of the most most uh, easily, or I guess one of the most affordable uh, 35 millimeter cameras that existed at the time. Because obviously Kodak was making 35 millimeter cameras, but they were a lot more expensive over kind of the base C3. Um, and that's kind of why the C3 got its name as the brick, because they said, hey, how can we make just the most affordable 35 millimeter camera? while taking out all of like the real you know expensive things so they knocked it down to the bare essentials no crazy styling just said hey how do we make these as simple as possible while still working and functioning and people loved them because they sold millions so that's really all for this video today i just wanted to kind of run you guys through what these different c3s look like kind of the timeline uh, and what that all entailed. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. If you did, I have a ton of other videos that talk a lot about just different style cameras, different style films and formats. So definitely uh, take a look at some of my other videos if you get a chance, if this is anywhere interesting for you. Um, also, you know, consider subscribing because I'm trying to always put out content, interesting stuff about cameras or just things I'm doing. And like I mentioned, um, I'm going to be tearing one of these down in another video and using some of the parts on it to work on another camera that I have off screen here that I'm going to be doing soon. So, hey, subscribe so you can see that when it comes out. Um, but for now, thanks for watching, guys.